Hustlers is proudly brought to you by Namdev Diamond Corporation. Good today, better tomorrow. Very excited this morning. We have a royal hustler of note. It's Mr. Gideon Shilongo, ONL Director for Group Corporate Relations. He graduated with an advanced diploma in business administration from the Association of Business Executives in the UK in 1997. And then he began his career as a teacher. And that was followed by a, a stint as a newsreader and program presenter at NBC. And then he spent the following years gaining experience at key government institutions and, and NGOs. And then he joined the ONL Group of companies in 1998 as the manager of corporate affairs uh, at Namibia Breweries Limited until 2001. And then he served a five-year term as the CEO of the Namibia Tourism Board before he returned to ONL as the NBL corporate affairs manager. And by 2012, he was appointed the chief corporate relations officer at the ONL Center. And now Mr. Gideon serves on several boards and has memberships with a few professional bodies. So what a man to have on a royal hustler. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Quite Good a resume morning. you have there. Sorry? I'm saying quite a resume that you have there. Yeah, sometimes you <laughs> forgot about those things. <laughs> let's, let's begin where things usually begin, way, way, way back. So please tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of where you were born, where you were raised, and how was that experience like for you? Yeah, no, I was born um, in an area called Tokahau in, in north, and I grew up like any other young boys of my age, mm. you know, doing a uh, home course and and the like and playing and so on and going to school and um, and of course aspiring you know you always had a role model yes. to look up to yes. uh, whether it, it was teachers or priests or or what have you so there was nothing uh, uh, th th there is nothing special about it it was it was just a normal yeah. upbringing in the village yes. Yeah. Speaking of village, um, you know, growing up, we're not really exposed to much. I, I grew up with my with my grandmother in, in dusty village of Katima. Um, and so during that time, not being being exposed to just what you have, what was your 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 biggest dream growing up? Yeah, of course, um, you know. Uh, my father was um, in a way a political activist, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and. Um, they were church people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have Sunday going to church, you have Sunday schools. And of course, they were also uh, subsistence farmers. So uh, looking after cattle, livestock, going to cattle posts during school holidays mm -hmm. and so forth. And also joining, um, you know, whether it's um, boy, boy, boy guides, uh, boy scouts. Yes. Yeah. So, and and sure, you know, you, you, you aspire to grow up mm -hmm. because whenever you are a child, you always want to, to grow up and become a major. Yes. Uh, you, you, you get tired of being controlled and be told what to do and not to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you aspire to be in high school. So, and, and, and every time you achieve those uh, things, you know, then when you come to uh, school, you aspire to be like that child yes. who is always the first in class, you know, who is always, you know, the role model at school, uh, class captain or a head perfect mm. um, and, and, and so forth. So uh, then, then comes sport. I was not that much sports person, but I, I, have, I have my attempt on uh, boxing. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and goalkeeping, but uh, they, I didn't go very far with it. <laughs> <laughs> by choice or by circumstance? I think by that they were the easiest I could okay. handle. Okay. So I was not a runner. I couldn't handle running. Mm. So... And, um, and, and yeah, so, and, and of course, uh, you know, being a role model, you look at uh, that time in, in our setting, you know, in our setting, uh, late uh, 70s, early 80s, you didn't have much, uh, many people with, with uh, different careers in our communities. Yes. 
So initially, when we grew up, then you hear about engineers mm -hmm. or you hear about uh, medical doctors. You know, th those becomes now, now, you know, people working in mines and what have you, apprenticeship and the like. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, th those were the, the things which were influencing you and shaping you in, in, in life. And of course, uh, that, that was also the time when many of my generation was leaving the country. It's true. Yeah. How did you find yourself in the UK in 1997? How did that come about? You know, in actual fact, uh, I didn't go to the UK. Oh, okay. I studied it right here. Ah. Yeah, so we were among the area students mm. of the current IUM. Oh. So when it was not IUM, it was then uh, uh, Institute of Higher Education which uh, Mr. David Namwandi have set up. So th those times, um, IUM was the only institution and we were being taught right from the house, mm -hmm. right? Uh, British courses. And we were writing uh, British examinations at British Council and so on. Um, so he, he, he gave us an option where you could still work and study after hours, which which that option was not readily available. Mm -hmm. So UNAM was still around. Uh, Polytechnic was just About almost start. starting. Yeah. They didn't have those options. Okay. If you want to study with them, you have to do it full time. <laughs> so you have to you have to leave your work environment Altogether. and basically become a student. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so which means no side hustle was involved whatsoever. No, okay. no. But with David Namwandi's institution, yeah. so we, we were, you know, he then gave us an option okay. where you still work during the day and in the evening you attend classes. Okay, then that makes sense. So we're going to take a pause on that, take a quick musical interlude. Now that we have a bit of background, we're going to be moving forward with where you are right now and uh, diving into ONL and the team that you lead. Back to uh, Mr. Gideon, who we've been speaking to, Gideon Shilongo, uh, ONL Director for Corporate uh, Relations there. And right now, I just want to dive into his current career. What do you find most fulfilling right now, being um, heading the, the Corporate Relations Department there by ONL? Yeah, so what I find fulfilling mm -hmm. is that uh, I find myself fortunate to work in an organization or group which has a, a purpose. Uh, that is in tune with who I am. Uh, creating a future enhancing life, which is really the purpose according uh, by which you do things to better the life, to, uh, for the betterment or to better the life of other people, you know? Yeah. And, um, and what I find fulfilling is 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 this organization uh, has it, it has such a, 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 such an impact um, in terms of its operations, its activities, its outreach, um, and and also in terms of its own engagement with society. Yes. And I find that quite fulfilling. Uh, because uh, you know you 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 don't feel like I'm going to work. Not at all. You, yeah. you feel like this is really what I want yeah, to do. Yeah. Yeah. So you are not necessarily doing it simply because mm. of a paycheck at the end of the month. That's right. Mm. But it's it's because uh, you know how wonderful is it yeah. to to see what you do. Yeah. Uh, creating a smile on, on the face people. of someone, mm. right? No, truly, it, it's really fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. I, from your resume, um, you wore many hats. You juggled so many balls. How have you been able to smoothly transition from so many different sectors? I mean, what's the number one key to pulling all of that off? Yeah, uh, uh, the, uh, many of those things they don't uh, they don't necessarily come with you planning to say, oh, yes, I want to wear many hats. Ah. So they, they just come, yeah. you, you find yourself involved in this, or, you know, or, or people, you know, you are invited to serve on that board, 
because people probably want uh, your contribution mm, and your expertise yeah 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 they they feel you can add uh, some form of value mm. and uh, yeah it's not something you really go out and hunt for to say oh yes mm. i want to save here i want to save there i want to save there so it, it it's it's it it, it just naturally happened but how are you managing to be on all of these different um, facets yeah no longer all of them now ah. and uh, it was not all of them at the same time mm -hmm. uh, but where you have them of course you manage your time mm -hmm. and 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 i what i also find with uh, onl is that we are actually encouraged and supported to do so as part of our contribution to society beautiful <clears throat> yeah so <clears throat> So there, there is no limitation or there is no upheld. You are not being held back, back ah. from, from doing those, those, whether it's charity work, whether it's uh, contribut contributing to national development, whether it's contributing to you know, society in whatever form. We are actually encouraged to do so. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Which leads me to my next question then. What has been your most proudest moment as a member of the ONL team? Yeah, my proudest moment, uh, it, it's, it's uh, yeah, there were many. I should really say, you know, in business, there is always um, up and downs, you know, like in any any life. Yeah. Business is like uh, <laughs> any person's life. True. So some years, you know, economic things perform. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of people with spending power and so on. And the other time, either competition or other things, you know, it, it gets tough on the business. The most uh, delightful moment is when you see businesses which have been struggling and sometimes even uh, con um, some, sometime, uh, being challenged with the thought whether you could really keep that business afloat. Mm. And to see such business operation recovering and to see, you know, ONL always investing even in hard times. Mm -hmm. Times uh, like this, I mean, like, like, uh, like now, yeah. when um, many of the businesses basically uh, uh, hold back on investment, ONL invest. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, uh, and, and, and to see the investments like, you know, in Midgard, where we revamp it yes. currently completely, or you see, you know, expansion in various areas. So th those are delightful moments. Yeah. Yeah. That you're still thriving under such harsh conditions and still giving back. And yes, yes, yes. And 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 and, uh, and and basically, it it also give life to others. It does. Because uh, you know, during these challenging times when there is little activity. When, when your business in, invest in improvement, in expansion, remember you have contractors and mm. subcontractors and what have you, yeah. who have otherwise uh, not been able to work. Mm. But uh, that, that offers the, the, the opportunity to still remain active and in the afloat. economic setting. True, and st also stay afloat. Yes. Um, no, th those are really proud moments, um, to be able to pump life into other businesses still. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for coming through. We really appreciate you. Um, and we, we appreciate uh, digging into the, your well of wisdom and the journey of your life. Thank you, Simo, for having me. And it was wonderful. Mm -hmm being at uh, 99. Indeed. Thank you. That was Mr. Gideon Shilongo talked us through, you know, growing up in the dusty villages, you know, seeing himself grow from strength to strength and now his proudest moments in O&L being able to really give back to other businesses so they too can still thrive. Gideon Shilongo, O&L Director for Group Corporate Relations.